My name's Nick with Nick's Electronics Repair. In today's video, we're gonna be fixing this Frigidaire oven controller board. Now, the customer did state that there was an issue with the oven malfunctioning, and there was some burning and a pop sound that came from it. So we're gonna inspect that and show you exactly how we fix that. Okay, and we are really zooming in here. And I don't know if you can tell, it's very minimal, but I'm seeing a little burn mark right here, as well as here, right there, and here. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna open this up and take a closer look on the backside and I'm willing to bet we're gonna find more damage here. Okay, we've separated our two pieces and now let's take a look. And yep, we can definitely see there's a lot going on here. All right, so this side, Obviously, it looks like there's a lot of the copper trace that was burnt away. And if we look over here, that's the back side of that area. It looks like some of the burning uh, actually caused damage to this side. Now, I don't think this side actually was damaged. I think it's just residue from the burning that occurred from that really over here. Now, the first thing I think we need to do is clean all this up make it look a little prettier, and then we can start inspecting all of our joints and see what's going on. All right, so this is what it looks like after doing quick clean. The other side looks like this. So it'll be a little easier for us to take a look at and see what's going on. Now for this part, we are gonna wanna use our microscope to really get close up on this. And this is the majority of the damage that I'm seeing here. So as you can tell, it looks like this joint is damaged and there is what looks to be like a break in the copper trace here. So what we're gonna wanna do is rebuild that. We're just gonna put a wire um, or a capacitor leg actually to connect this joint over here to this one. That'll reform that bond right there and hopefully also strengthen the leg of the component here as well. If we look around, I don't see any other damage. It is just that immediate area. Okay, so to do that, I'm actually going to grind away a little bit of the coating here on the trace. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and clean that off. And we're just removing the original solder here. It was a little burnt. It's got some impurities in it. I just wanna go ahead and make sure we put a fresh coat And I'm gonna add some flux because I wanna make sure we have a really good proper bond between the traces on the PCB, the solder, and the leg of that component that was a little bit damaged. All right, and as promised, we're gonna use the leg of a capacitor to strengthen that trace. And uh, I can't say I'm super happy with the, the bond between that trace rebuild and the PCB and everything else. So we're just gonna add a little extra solder now. There we go, that looks a lot better to me. Let's do a little cleanup. Okay, looking pretty good. All right, now let's take a look over here. We have our relay. This is this uh, big one over here. And if we take a real close look, it looks like that trace is actually missing completely. So I don't even see the leg going through. So what this means is most likely we're gonna need to replace that relay. Now the relay, the legs are over here, here, this joint over here, this joint over here, and this one here, which seems to be completely blown off. So let's go ahead and desolder the remaining four that are still there. So to do that, I'm gonna start by adding some solder to the joints. Now this one's a large joint, it's on a large pad, so it's gonna be soaking up a lot of the heat. So this one's gonna be a little, more, a little bit more difficult to desolder. 
All right, we're gonna start by these smaller traces here. All right, I'm gonna do this one over here next, and we're gonna do the large one last. I don't think I'm gonna get the rest with the desolder pump, so we're gonna go ahead and use the wick instead. Let's check those two joints. Those look pretty good. Let me see if I can wiggle. Yeah, I can wiggle the, the relay through here. So this is our last joint. So what I'm gonna do is just melt it, and with my other hand, I'm gonna pull the relay out. There we go. It's free and clear. Now the reason I did that is because it's now going to be a little easier to desolder this joint with the relay out of circuit. All right, well, if we look at this relay under the microscope, uh, it definitely looks like we have an issue here. That leg got completely burnt off, blown off. So this relay is most certainly going to need to be replaced. I'm not even gonna bother testing it. I have our working replacement relay here, but before we install it, we are gonna need to prep this area to make sure we can install the new relay. So let's see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and grind away just a little bit of the joint here, that copper. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna get rid of all the burn residue so that when we re-solder the new relay in, it's going to make contact with high quality metal and not have foreign material that could prevent a good bond. All right, we're gonna go ahead and clean all that off. And next we're gonna do a little bit more cleaning. I'm gonna use this metal brush. All right, and that looks a heck of a lot better. And I am switching to a slightly larger soldering iron tip so I get a little bit better heat transfer. And I'm just gonna add a lot of solder here in the surrounding areas. Just to prep the area. Now on the front side, I am gonna do just a little bit of a quick clean, nothing too fancy. All right, we're gonna feed our replacement through. All right, and we're gonna solder in those four legs that are still in good condition, or sorry, joints that are in good condition. And this is not an ideal joint, this is not my best, but we just wanna lock in the relay for now. We'll come back to those in a minute. All right, I just formed a little hook. We're gonna go ahead and hook our relay. All right, we're gonna do it a second time. I'm realizing I can't get a good angle. So we're gonna try that one more time. Okay, and now we have multiple points of contact going from the leg to the rest of the pad. So now let's flood it. Oh, come that back. Okay, that got loose, so we're gonna wanna actually redo that. Well, you know what, I think that should be good. I mean, those legs are rated for 450 volts DC. Um, so just having one should be enough, and now that we have a lot of solder connecting, I think that should be plenty of surface area. So I'm not too worried about this being an issue, even though I don't have the best perfect contact that I wanted. 
Now, there's not really a need for us to do anything here because there's no trace uh, or component that it's supposed to connect to. I am just adding a little bit more solder to give it a little more material, pass-through material for power going from the left to the right. I think it'll be fine as is. The reason that this happened in the first place is because this relay that we just replaced typically gets cracked solder joints on those legs below. And most likely what happened is the leg that got burnt up had arcing occur, which drew much more power and then damaged the PCB and the relay itself. So one of the things we're gonna do to make sure that no other issues occur to this board is look around the entire board for other cracked solder joints. Now typically where we wanna look is where all of the high power goes through because that's where you have the most heat, the most expansion, and when the oven's off, it cools off and it contracts back. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Our higher power areas are gonna be, of course, the connector pins here, over here, the relays, and the transformer. So let's flip it over. Now looking at these connector pins, I can actually already see a ring forming right here around that pin. So that's a cracked solder joint. So we're definitely gonna need to add some solder here, reform that bond. This one looks okay. Maybe it's just the beginnings over here, so it's not that bad yet, but we're definitely gonna have to touch that up. These look okay. We're gonna to touch all of them up just in case, of course. And then this one also looks like there is a ring starting to form, which is odd because this one is a uh, no connect. There's no, these last two, and this one over here, you can see there's no trace going anywhere. So they don't connect anywhere. We don't technically need to touch them up. We probably will anyways. Um, let's keep moving on. That looks okay, that looks okay. That also looks okay. Yeah, these look fine. And those were the, the metal connector pins here. That You have a lot of power going through these, so we definitely wanna check those. Um, let's see, our other relays are over here. These three joints, these three joints. These all look okay for the most part. They also, they do also connect over here, which those also look okay. Um, again, we're gonna go ahead and touch them up anyways, just in case. Let's see, our last relay is this one over here. And I don't see cracks on joints on it either, but again, we're gonna touch it up. And lastly, we have our transformer, which is going to be these four pins here. It looks like someone's actually already touched that up. It wasn't me. And I don't think the customer did that either, but it's interesting. All right, we'll start with our transformer. And for this one, I don't feel the need to clean up, desolder, or anything like that because this solder looks actually already pretty clean. If there was burning or impurities, then I would go ahead and say, let's go ahead and remove all the old solder and just go full fresh solder, but these look like clean joints to begin with. Um, I'm not a fan of this one. I have a little bit of a horn on the side, so let me clean that up with some flux. All right, that looks better. And then same goes with these. I don't think I need to desolder them first. We're just gonna add new solder. I'm gonna try and do it from a different angle because it, the shadows are making everything a little dark. All right, I think we're just gonna switch cameras and we're just gonna go with this one. Our 
last relay over here. So there's actually that R75 resistor down here. I wanna go ahead and touch that one up as well. And it's right here. And the reason for is, if we follow the pin over here from that first relay, it does go to that resistor. And we have seen that resistor burn up because of crack joints in the past. So we're just gonna go ahead and touch that one up as our last piece, and we are all done. Okay, so there's one more thing that we forgot to do, which is we did check to make sure the resistor was soldered on correctly, that there was no crack joints, but I did not make sure that it was actually in good condition. So that's what we're gonna do next. We have our multimeter in resistance mode, and we're gonna do a measurement, and we have an open circuit. So that resistor is actually burnt up and does need to be replaced. So let's do that next. All right, we're gonna flip the board over, and we did just solder it back on, and we're gonna remove that extra solder we just added. All right, and there's our resistor. We're gonna feed through our replacement here. And this one's a little bit bigger. Oh, and I'm told that I'm supposed to cut the leads before I solder, so we're gonna go ahead and just redo that solder joint. And of course we get 216, which is four ohms, a little lower than what we were expecting, the 220, but it is in circuit, so that seems normal to me. We're gonna go ahead and do a quick check with our multimeter in continuity mode. So when we have a short, we get a beep. We have our L2 out, L2 in. We have no beep. That is what this relay activates is those two pins. So let's see, let's go to bake. We're gonna turn that on. We're gonna wait for that relay click. We get the click and we get our beep. So that means our relay that we just installed and replaced is fully functional. Let's go ahead and cancel. Let's see, does our broil function also do anything for us here. No beep. We get our click and sure enough, our relay is activated. This does confirm we have another successful repair. If you have an oven controller board that you would like to send in for us to fix, we'll have our contact information and website listing in the video description down below. If you found the content helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.